Hi YouTube, it's Kathy, and this is my weekly entertainment wrap-up for May 3rd through 9th. This week I read five books, I watched three shows, I watched four movies, I listened to one podcast, and I listened to one book. Apologies if you can hear mechanic sounds in the background of this video. Somebody is doing laundry, so I can hear it, but sometimes you guys can't, so we'll see. If you saw my last weekly wrap-up or the vlog that went up this week, you know that I was reading the Murderbot Diaries series. Last week I read the first two novellas, this week I finished novella three, novella four, and and I read the full-length book. Obviously, these are number three, four, and five in a series, so there's not a lot I can talk about. What I can talk about is how they made me feel. I'm not going to tell you too much about plot, I'm not going to tell you too much about characters, but I am going to tell you that I love this whole series. It's just fantastic. I really love that Murderbot meets all these different types of people and how they interact with those different types of people based on just all the circumstances they're in. I also really love that the full-length novel felt like a full-length novel. We were really getting into character dynamics and having people have a little bit of back and forth, which is the one thing that was really missing to me from the novellas because in a novella you just don't have time for that. So just for the record, the third in this series is called Rogue Protocol. The fourth in this series is called Exit Strategy, and Network Effect is the fifth in the series and is the full-length novel that just came out. I do also really love that we met up with previous characters and got to explore Murderbot's dynamic with them more. It just makes everything come together so well, and I highly, highly recommend this series. If you haven't seen that vlog, which doesn't have any spoilers, I will link it down below. This week I also read the graphic novel Adventure Zone, Here There Be Gerblins. I know about the McElroys. I went to PodCon and I I went to PodCon 2, which they co-created. However, I've never actually listened to any of their podcasts, but I know that this one is based off their podcast of the same name, Adventure Zone. This is a father and three grown-up sons playing D&D &D together. One of the sons is the DM, the father and the other two sons are players in the game, and they are very, very funny. What I especially liked about this is I started reading the book and I was like, oh, this is the same campaign that my fledgling group of D&Ders was playing before all of this happened. So part of me was like, oh no, am I gonna get spoiled for things we haven't gotten to on the campaign? But no, they went completely sideways and went in a different direction than we did, so no, no spoilers for me on my current campaign, which was nice. This was highly entertaining. If I get the chance, I will read the other graphic novels because there are more in the series. And also, if I ever find the time, maybe I will listen to the podcast. The other novella I read this week was Can't Escape Love by Alyssa Cole. This is number 2.6 in the Reluctant Royal series. 2.6 because there's already a novella that is at 2.5, which is Once Ghosted, Twice Shy. I had no idea there was a second novella in this series that I absolutely adore, so as soon as I realized my library had it, I downloaded it and read it. If you're familiar with the series, the female lead in this one is Reggie, which is Portia's twin sister. We hear a lot about her, especially in the second book in the series. We hear a little bit about her probably in the first book. I'm pretty sure she makes a couple of appearances there. But this is a little bit of a side novella because if you remember her interactions with Portia in the second book, she asked Portia to track down this person for her, and this is how all all of that went. It turns out she got Portia to track down the email of this one person who she used to always join their live streams at night. She was the only person who ever viewed the live streams and she really really liked his voice and when she's having insomnia it's the only thing that can get her to sleep. So basically she's trying to contact this person because all of his previous live streams have been taken down because she needs his voice to go to sleep. From there a business arrangement happens because she is also a giant geek and he's working on a project to do with her favorite thing and and a romance ensues because obviously this is a romance novel. I found this adorable. This also had disability rep because she is in a wheelchair and he is autistic. The only reason that I didn't give this five stars is I wanted more of it. On to the shows I watched this week. We started the second season of Scandal. We're still in the territory of stuff I had seen before, but it's been many years so I forgot about it. It gets really intense super duper intense and uh yeah i'm still enjoying it i hope the person i'm watching with is enjoying it she did fall asleep during the last episode but that is not uncommon for her so I uh, am not taking that as an indication that she doesn't enjoy what's going on. If you've never seen the series before, it's basically a political thriller in TV format, and I really dig it. My quarantine roommate and I also finished the fourth season of Better Call Saul. We managed to watch two episodes, and uh... Yeah. It's hard to talk about individual episodes, especially four seasons into a show, but 
I definitely knew what was going to happen with a certain German character by the end of the ninth episode because there couldn't be anything else that would happen after what he did. We also just got to the point where Jimmy is officially changing his lawyer name to Saul Goodman. I also watched the current week's episode of Survivor, which was a double header. Because it was so long, I thought we were going to get one vote out and then one return of a player, but we got two votes out and I still have to wait until next week to find out which player returns. And then I think it's the finale because we're currently at a top five, which will become a top six when that player returns from Exile Island. And then I think it's going to be the finale. I don't know. So I'm interested to see how it goes, but at this point, unless somebody really awesome happens to come back from exile, uh, Tony's gonna win. This past week contained the date May 4th, so because we're big nerds, we had to watch some Star Wars movies because May the 4th be with you. We did a rewatch of Episode 7, The Force Awakens. We did a rewatch of Episode 8, The Last Jedi. And then I, for the first time, watched Episode 9, which is Rise of Skywalker. Here's the thing about this franchise. I enjoy it enough but I also don't really care all that much. So even just thinking back on what happened in those episodes, and like, there was a lot of fighting, there was a lot of sexual tension between characters that Disney will never let be together. Yoda came back, but still looked like a puppet, which was cool. There was this whole big alien Coachella thing in the last movie, which was interesting. Although it feels like sacrilege to say, especially because I feel it will hurt my nerd cred, I don't really care about this franchise. I enjoy it while it's on the screen, but it doesn't make a lasting impact on me. The other movie I watched was Extraction. This stars Chris Hemsworth as somebody who is ex-military and is going in to try to retrieve the son of a drug lord who was stolen by another drug lord. This is even bloodier and more action-packed than it already sounds. The most impressive thing about this movie is there was a large section in the first big battle sequence that seemed to be all one camera shot. And when I say that, I'm talking about going from buildings to other buildings to cars to other buildings to like all around. It was very good camera work and I just want to watch that sequence again. Especially because the one part I closed my eyes for was not in that sequence which was somebody being murdered with a rake. Which especially made me laugh when later in the movie we find out that Tyler, the main character's last name, is Rake. And I'm like, you mean that garden implement you used to kill two people earlier is also your surname? That's a little bit weird of a detail, but okay. This had some action tropes in it I could have done without, but overall, if you're looking for a hardcore badass action movie, then that's what this is. The podcast I listened to this week was Our Plague Year. I was catching up because I've fallen very behind on it. I listened to episodes 7 through 11. This is a podcast put on by Joseph Fink, and it's all about how people are coping with the current circumstances in the world. They've also opened up voicemail, so you can call a certain number and just leave your story, which is always very interesting to listen to. I'm still just a couple of episodes behind, but overall it is an interesting project, and I really like stories, so I really enjoy listening to it. The book I listened to this week was Pet. This is a YA novel following a black trans girl in this utopian society where they've gotten rid of all of the people that do bad things. Lucille is a monster-free location. However, something fantastic reveals that that might not be the case, and Jam, our protagonist, goes on this journey to figure out if there is a monster lurking in Lucille. There is a very important fantasy aspect to this book that I didn't know about going into it, so if you also don't know, I would like you to go into it not knowing what that is but the way it's written is absolutely stunning. I've been meaning to read Freshwater by the same author, just haven't gotten around to it, but I'm going to have to because this book was written so well, and I know so many people that give such high regards to Freshwater that I'm just like, how haven't I yet? This book does deal with tough topics, so if you have any triggers around abuse, you might need to avoid it for your own health, but this is a very powerful book, and I highly recommend it to those who can read it. That's it for this week. If you've read, watched, or listened to any of these, let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. If you don't feel like leaving a comment but want to make sure that I know you were here, just leave me an emoji or a smiley face if you're on your keyboard. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye!